Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I thought I'd do a video today about anti-racist books and I've been thinking about what to do. There's been a lot going on in the States and across the world after the death of George Floyd and which has really moved me um, and so I wanted to talk about it in the context of books and I know that I'm still learning and reading about racism and I still have a long way to go one of the things I can do is to share with you the books that I'm reading and ones that I have read and really loved and recommend um, and perhaps that will help spread the message and help others in their sort of quest to learn more about not just not being a racist but being anti-racist and in one sense it seems a bit token or a bit too little too late to do this at the moment just because it is an, a huge issue in the news and why don't we do this all year round but I was inspired by a video that Books by Lanes posted uh, that I watched today where she said uh, well she called out booktubers for not really doing enough and she said she made a really good point that for black people who live with this day in day out this is incredibly wearing and really hard in terms of their mental health and it's an issue that they're very close to and acutely aware of um, and in some ways we as white people who are not having to deal with this day in day out can take the burden from them in in doing videos like this because I can speak about this without it you know impacting on my mental health I'm at a remove in I'm removed enough from it that I can I can do that that's one thing I can do and I thought that was a really good point that she made that it's not just about um, joining in the conversation but actually relieving people from that burden that they have to bear all the time and of course it's been spoken about in some of the posts and things that I've seen on social media that it really isn't up to black people to educate us about racism that's our job to do so that's hence I thought I would make this video and I've got some non-fiction books and some fiction books as always I'd welcome your recommendations as well there are a, I've been screenshotting lots of stacks and lots of lists of books and there are a couple that I went to buy today and couldn't find so there are still more that I haven't got here that I want to get to but just dealing with the ones that I could get um, why I'm no longer talking to white people about race I've read this, I loved it. Amanda and I did it on the podcast, I think it was last year. So this is by Rennie Edo Lodge. It started with a blog post that she wrote where she was talking about being exhausted, talking to white people about race because for her, she comes to that conversation with the weight of history, with an understanding of the systemic racism um, that is insidious and all around us and if there was some let's say there's a small incident and she says something about it and a white person might say oh well that was just a joke or don't worry about it that's just a small thing and she just had this exhaustion of having to come to she was coming to it from a completely different point of view and having to then explain that and have the white person either be defined or defensive or just have no understanding and this sort of gap this huge gap in in understanding so that's how that sort of prompted a blog post and from that came the book and the book is excellent I can't recommend this highly enough it's a UK based book but of course um, you know the parallels can be drawn in the US and indeed in Australia um, but she talks about among other things the history so this the slave trade and I think Liverpool was where a lot of the boats ended up in the UK I could be wrong it's a little while since I've read it but the history of of that and how that sort of generated certain attitudes and biases and then the systemic racism and she talks about white privilege really well and how it is this invisible thing but it's an absence of needing to worry about things it's um, just 
things that we take for granted that we don't even see as a privilege. And in fact, that's another really interesting point that was books by Lane's talked about was she said I'm so sick of people saying they're shocked by the footage of George George Floyd because that didn't shock me because I see that all the time and we in a sense have the privilege of only seeing it if it's on the news we don't have to deal with it you know all year round all day in day out and so that's just an example I think of how we can opt in and out of some of something like that um, but there are obviously uh, so many other examples but it was really educational for me but very rigorous lots of studies lots of data but she has a really wonderful engaging tone it could be an angry book but it isn't it's very sort of calm and measured uh, not that it has to be of course but that I think what that does is leave it for the reader to then feel that anger on her behalf and so that's really powerful um, so I really recommend this why I'm no longer talking to white people about race then The Good Immigrant edited by Nikesh Shukla and this is the UK one there's also a US one which I have next this is excellent it's a series of essays and they are all uh, really different voices really bright creative writers and um, with different styles but very strong writing and um, all tackling race and racism and the experience of being an immigrant from a different point of view and I learned so much from this book so for example there's an essay about hairstyles and what it's like if you're a black woman and you need to have your hair you know your hair needs a specific way of being styled and a lot of hairdressers just say oh, I can't do that and just what that's like so a day-to-day -day thing just a simple thing like that not being able to get your hair cut there's a really interesting one about diversity and literature and a teacher talking about first of all just wanting a simple thing of finding a book with um, characters who are not white in it and then realizing how few and far between they are and then what's really interesting is finding that among students and then authors have commented on this as well when they first wrote stories that they would put white characters because they thought to be in a book you had to be white and so how just how ingrained those attitudes become and how important it is for our literature to be diverse um, that's just another example but there is there's one about music um, they're really really interesting engaging essays and each one of them made me think and really have to rethink things that I hadn't considered um, I hadn't thought about or hadn't known about and so very educational but really great energetic prose so that's the good immigrant and then there is the good immigrant USA which is also excellent and they're both good it's not as if if you read one you don't need to read the other because they the essays are so strong and this has um, for example Alexander Chi it has Teju Cole Chigozi Obioma Jade Chang and who else they're all that all fabulous and so the good immigrant USA very good again a really bracing read um, each one is just from a, a different point of view and I highly recommend it then one that I bought today so I haven't read this but I've seen it recommended which is hood feminism and so this is the notes from the women white feminists forgot and I think that's going to be a really good wake-up call as well it's by Mickey Kendall and there are some good quotes about it. Fatima Bhutto says, the feminist intervention we have all been waiting for. Um, Samantha Irby says, this book is an act of fierce love and advocacy and is urgently necessary. So I'm looking forward to that, to look at it from a feminist perspective, but to sort of move beyond white feminism. And there's also, um, I think from memory, Rennie Edo Lodge talks about feminism as well and and racism within feminism in her book as well. So that's the nonfiction and the one, well, 
among others, one that I still want to get is How to Be an Anti-Racist. I think it's by Ibram X. Kendi, and that keeps coming up on all of the lists, and I really want to get that. It wasn't available in my bookshop, so we'll have to order that one. On to the fiction, Beloved by Toni Morrison, outstanding, superb, really engaging, um, all the emotions, all the feels, but it's done so deftly and it's so much about the character and the story that it is whilst you it's not so much about learning about slavery and the impact and the aftermath of slavery um, but so much as walking in someone else's shoes so it's that real empathy experience of living with this character and getting more of an understanding of what it would be like as a slave or as someone who has escaped from slavery. So I can't recommend this highly enough. I'm sure that you have already heard of it, if not read it. But suffice to say, I came late to Toni Morrison. I think I only read this about two years ago and I didn't know what to expect. I thought it could be daunting, um, but it is just so, it's just a perfect book. So it's about Seth who has left the farm where she was living as a slave for many years and she's moved to Ohio but she's still sort of she's still not free in the sense that her house is haunted by the ghosts of the past and I don't deal with ghosts by the way so I chose to view that as sort of metaf metaphor but you know you can read it either way it's so deftly done that you could read it as really being ghosts or you could read it as more of a um, metaphor or more symbolic so it's just masterfully written in that sense and then her baby died unnamed and so that's the tombstone with the single word beloved and so that's the heartbreaking sort of center of the story but she takes you there without overdoing the sentimentality, but in a way that is so, yeah, has so much impact by the time you sort of get towards the end of the book. So you'll need the tissues for this one, but it is so worth it. Now, another one that doesn't really need any introduction or indeed recommendation, because I'm sure you've read it, but The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, um, just outstanding. Again, it won the... National Book Award for this and the Pulitzer Prize. Um, so it centres on Cora who escapes from a cotton plantation in Georgia and travels north along the Underground Railroad. And that was a the name given to networks of people who would help slaves escape. And Colson Whitehead has taken it a step further and invented an actual Underground Railroad for the purposes of telling the story and she pops up in different states and when she is staying in each state you see what's happening in that state and what's happening to black people um, and it's some of those images have stayed with me and I think I read this in about 2016 and it's sort of unforgettable so it's one way without reading non-fiction it is one way to learn a lot about the history of slavery in the states and you know different elements of it not just the worst elements but the actions of people who tried to help just in a way that is so alive and so engaging because you're really following Cora and seeing what will happen to her that it's somehow sometimes that's more accessible or sticks with you even more than reading a you know a proper non-fiction book about it um, obviously it's good to do both but this is a really readable and memorable book that's the Underground Railroad and I still haven't read The Nickel Boys which I must do which also just won the Pulitzer Prize so next is Walter Mosley Devil in a Blue Dress and this is a crime novel um, and I think it's a series and I've only still read this one so I've got more to look forward to but the character is Easy Rawlins he's a war veteran a black man a war veteran and he comes back to LA and he's sort of looking for how to Earn, you know earn some money and someone offers to pay him if he'll go and find a woman called Miss Monet and that's his job and of course it becomes a his 
have to, has to solve a crime. And I've forgotten, I read it a while ago now, but it was so good, really strong, really gripping, very pacey, and it does just turn the tables on what is often the case in a crime novel with a police officer or a you know protagonist who's who's becomes a detective where they are often white and to look at that world from a black person's point of view which is not overdone in the sense that's not really the focus it's the the crime the, you know the mystery is the focus of the story but it does just get you to think differently in a way that I think is really important for all of us. It just, again, gives you that experience of stepping into someone else's shoes and seeing what that world was like. And bearing in mind it's set in the 50s, or no, the summer of 1948. So that is Devil in a Blue Dress by Walter Mosley. And as I said, I think there are lots and lots of other books by him that you can check out but yeah excellent excellent strong writing then I have talked about this book so much but I just want might as well do it again too much lip by Melissa Lukashenko because in Australia we have equally um, if not worse issues with racism and Aboriginal deaths in custody is a huge issue here as well and so we need to be reading a lot more Indigenous voices in our in Australia and Too Much Lit by Melissa Lukashenko, just a brilliant, brilliant read. And it is so full of life and colour and humour and reality. It is that you can't put it down. You keep wanting to get back to it. It's a real page turner. It whips along. So it's based on Kerry. So Kerry has avoided her hometown and prison. That's been how she's getting along in life, just avoiding going home and trying to stay out of prison. But she has to go back. When she gets home, there's a land rights issue that her family's dealing with that she gets it drawn into. There's a man who comes onto the scene. There's a lot of dysfunction within her family. There's alcohol, there's violence and so on. Sometimes it seems exaggerated or, you know, it's a very over-the-top feeling of the book but Melissa Lukashenko has said all the issues that she has raised are things that she her family or her extended family have experienced and so it is very real it gives you an insight into what's happening in towns across Australia um, amongst Aboriginal communities and their struggles and so that is all in this book but it's also just a, a great yarn, a great story. So I really recommend it. It's too much lip. It won the Miles Franklin Award last year and deservedly so. So yes, add that to your list. If it's available where you are, I, I really urge you to check that out. Then two that I've bought today that I haven't read and I'm looking forward to reading. One is Bluebird, Bluebird by Attica Locke. And I think this is, if not a straight crime, I think there is a mystery element to it. And it's based on a park ranger who travels along up and down East Texas, I believe, and then has to solve mysteries or solve crimes along the way. I can't tell you much more, but it has, it's been recommended so many times. I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar with it. But what does it say here? When it comes to law and order, East Texas plays by its own rules. A fact that Darren Matthews, a black Texas ranger working the backwoods towns of Highway 59, knows all too well. Deeply ambivalent, he was the first in his family to get as far away from Texas as he could until duty called him home. He's drawn to a case at Lark. Two dead bodies have been washed up. First a black lawyer and then a local white woman and it stirred up a hornet's nest. So this sounds absolutely fantastic and I think there's a new one out because I just saw a really good video by Waterstones on the on Waterstones YouTube channel where Attica Locke does a shelfie and she talks about three books that have influenced her writing and it's really engaging and I just fell in love with her watching that video. So I'm definitely going to read this soon and the new one, I can't tell you the name, is it Heaven and 
something to do with heaven and high water. I could be wrong. Then there is The White Girl by Tony Birch. And again, I can't tell you much, but I read his short story collection, Common People, and really enjoyed that. He's an Aboriginal Australian author. And this has been, I think, long listed for the Miles Franklin Award or possibly short listed. I think it's the long list at the moment, but it's about Odette. Um, Odette has lived on the fringes of a small country town, raising her granddaughter Sissy and has stayed under the radar of the authorities who are removing Aboriginal children from their communities. And this has happened, as we know. When the menacing sergeant arrives in town, any freedom Odette and Sissy enjoy comes under threat. And so she must make a choice to protect her family. And so I don't know what era this is set, but certainly we've had the history of the stolen generation where a lot of Aboriginal children were forcibly removed from their homes um, and sent to live on missions around Australia. And so I don't know if this is that story or if it's, um, you know, what, what time frame it is, but again, I just trust Tony Birch's writing and I'm looking forward to reading this and seeing how it will go with the Miles Franklin. So that is a small list. There are more books that I could have talked about, but I've really limited it to the books that I have genuinely loved and learned a lot from and really heartily recommend. So it is just a start, but I've got uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist I Still Want to Buy and I think there are a couple of others. And of course, there's a, there are a lot of lists floating around. The other thing I'm doing is um, getting books for my children. And I've bought a couple today. That could be a whole separate video. Let me know if that is of interest or if you have any recommendations for children's books. Um, Jacqueline Woodson, I know, comes up on all of the lists and um, couldn't find that today. So I have to order something by her for my daughter. But um, yeah, any recommendations for books for anti-racist books for children I would love that's one other thing I'm doing let me know if you have any recommendations or what you're reading at the moment and I hope you're all well and I'll see you soon bye